Tonight's top European Union stories from the Unit UK include EU has a secret plan for police to be able to remote stop cars. And Spanish Prime Minister says no referendum, no independence for Catalonia. Unilever could pull out of Britain if it left the EU, warns multinationals boss. And Airbus joins foreign investors warning against Britain quitting the EU. Plus, European Union renewables offset at least $41 billion in fossil fuel imports. It's Friday, 31st of January. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. First up, the hot story from our website, theunituk.com. The EU has secret plan for police to remote stop cars. The European Union is secretly developing a remote stopping device to be fitted to all cars that would allow the police to disable vehicles at the flick of a switch from a control room. Confidential documents from a committee of senior EU police officers who hold their meetings in secret have set out a plan entitled Remote Stopping Vehicles as part of a wider law enforcement surveillance and tracking measures. Now, the project will work on a technological solution that can be built in standard for all cars that enter the European market, said a restricted document. The devices, which could be in all new cars by the end of the decade, would be activated by a police officer working from a computer screen in central headquarters. Once enabled, the engine of the car used by a fugitive or other suspect would stop, the supply of fuel would be cut and the ignition switched off. Now, I find myself stunned by how rapidly this Big Brother state surveillance and control is being revealed. The pace towards the end game is quickening. And as it does so, it seems that the noose is tightening around the necks of the free people. And Spanish PM, no referendum, no independence for Catalonia. That's right. With calls for Catalonia's independence on the rise, Spanish Prime Minister Mariano Rajoy has told local media there will be no referendum that puts into question the sovereignty of the Spanish people while he is head of the centre-right government. The report goes on to demonstrate the flagrant disregard Mariano has for the people. In an interview on Antenna 3 TV, he said, The state is prepared for any scenario that may occur. The law will be enforced. There will be no referendum that calls into question the sovereignty of the Spanish people. There will be no independence of Spanish territory while I am president. Now, not content with telling his own people where they can stuff their democratic rights, regular visitors to our site will also know that Mariano Rajoy had a go at taking the whip hand to the people of Scotland. And Wikipedia reports, In November 2013, Mariano Rajoy stated that an independent Scotland would have to reapply for membership of the European Union, causing considerable irritation to the Scottish government and criticism that Rajoy was interfering in the internal affairs of another state. Relations between the Spanish and Scottish governments deteriorated further when the Scottish government alleged that Rajoy invited a senior UK official to visit Madrid, ostensibly to coordinate British and Spanish opposition to the independence movement in Scotland and Catalonia. Unilever could pull out of Britain if it left EU, warns multinationals boss. The UK would be better off staying inside the European Union than kicking against the table and voting to leave, the boss of one of the world's largest consumer goods companies has said. Paul Polman, the Dutch chief executive of the consumer multinational Unilever, said the company could review its UK investment if Britain left the EU. We will always look at things, he said, when asked whether Unilever could reduce its presence in the UK. Unilever employs 6,000 people in the UK, which is a net exporter to the EU for its business. We are a positive contributor in that sense to the UK economy, and we would have to look at that then for the UK versus Europe, just like we do in any other country that is not in the EU, he said. Hmm. So why does Unilever have such a political interest in this pro-EU 
best for Britain's stance. Is it really about jobs and investment? Well, I would say never. I have never to date sat on a board table that had one jot of interest in job creation and social welfare. Everything is about maximising profits. Interesting, then, that I dug out this article from The Guardian, which says... A 2009 report from the U.S. Government Accountability Office said that 83 of 100 of the largest U.S. publicly traded corporations were maintaining subsidiaries in tax havens. Now here we've pulled out the key data on where FTSE 100 subsidiary companies are located. And guess what? Well, there is Unilever with 181 tax havens, 26% of its corporate footprint. So, key bono. Who benefits really, Mr. Pullman? Airbus joins foreign investors warning against Britain quitting EU. European aerospace group Airbus, one of Britain's largest employers, has voiced concerns over the possibility of the country leaving the European Union, saying the benefits of an alternative economic model needed to be proven. The Franco-German company that employs 17,000 workers in Britain is the latest large foreign investor to say it favours Britain continuing its membership of the 28-member trading bloc. Car giants Ford and Japan's Nissan have said they would have to re-evaluate their operations if Britain pulled out of the EU in a proposed referendum. Now, Airbus, formerly known as EADS, employs most of its staff in Bristol and North Wales, where the company's passenger plane wings are made and assembled. OK, so this French and German-owned company is also calling the shots on the EU. But I remember as a child we had a world-class aircraft manufacturer, British Aerospace. Well, what happened to them? Well, the European Union, you know, that uh, French and German-dominated self-appointed government dressed in the guise of the European common market. Under European law, state ownership is deemed illegal state aid. Thus, in 1980 the British Aerospace Act was introduced, which says, An act to provide for the vesting of all the property, rights, liabilities and obligations of British Aerospace in a company nominated by the Secretary of State and the subsequent dissolution of British Aerospace and to make provision with respect to the finances of that company. In a nutshell, privatise it. Now, in accordance with provisions of the British Aerospace Act 1980, the statutory corporation was changed to a public limited company, British Aerospace Public Limited, on 1st of January 1981. And on 4th of February 1981, the government sold 51% of its shares. The British government then sold its remaining shares in 1985. So we always come back to, so what did the government do with the money? But... What we're really seeing here when we take a look at the long picture is that UK politicians have been drawn into selling off the country's assets, which are then sucked up, merged or squashed by foreign investors. And in return, we get short term jobs and they get long term profits. Perhaps we need just a little bit more business now in our British politicians. EU renewables offset at least $41 billion in fossil imports. The EU avoided some €30 billion Euros in imported fuel costs by using domestic renewables in 2010 and has likely avoided more since as both renewables use and oil and gas import prices have risen. The European Commission said in a draft paper on energy prices obtained by Platts on Tuesday. Now, the estimated €30 billion Euros of avoided costs were still rather limited in comparison with the EU's external trade deficit in energy products of €304 billion Euros in 2010. But it added that the €30 billion Euros based on the latest available data should be considered as a low estimate based on rather cautious assumptions. Now, the EC also noted that EU governments paid out some €27 billion Euros in subsidies to the renewable sector in 2020. So total renewable energy output was 150 million metric tonnes of oil equivalent in 2010, and this is expected to rise to 238 million more by 2020, the EC said. With unchanged fuel prices, this would imply an increase in the avoided imported fuel costs to some €50 billion Euros in 2020, it said. Now, the actual increase is likely to be higher as many analysts project substantial price increases for EU fossil fuel imports by 2020, it added. Now, 
All this leaves me with a question on all the fracking hype. The political rhetoric in the UK is, let's frack the place wholesale. But first of all, the demand and legislation is for renewables, and fracking is about as far from renewable as you can get. Secondly, the EU's illegal state aid ruling paradigm ensures that we in Britain can't exploit this resource to our own benefit. So, guess who's going to do it? That's right, the French company Total. And what's even better is they can't do it in France because fracking has been completely banned because of the environmental risks. Today in our video library, I really encourage you to take some time out and review our first episode of Critical Thinking, What is Democracy? Now we discuss how our parliament in Britain has been dismantled. Now as more and more powers have been transferred to the halls of Brussels where decisions are taken by an unelected, unaccountable EU commission of 28 supreme political elites. In this episode, our guest Renzo Zambrano from Communist Venezuela and Trevor Coleman, member of the European Parliament, discuss their respective governmental systems. What is really striking is just how close these two apparently opposing governmental systems have become. Fascinating where Trevor and Renzo compare parliamentary systems and in both cases they explain that they are powerless to change anything and that even if their politicians weren't there the decisions would still be implemented. Trevor goes on to state that whilst he is not a conspiracy theorist it's very clear that there is another agenda being followed. Now it's a long show but I think you'll find it fascinating. Take a look, it's in our video section of our website in the critical thinking category and the episode in question is episode one. Now, let me just focus your attention for a moment on another area of our website, the European Journal. Now, if you like, you could describe this as a social news section. This aspect of our website looks at what is trending, i.e. what stories are popular and being talked about on social media such as Twitter, Facebook and Google+. In one sense, this is taking the underground stories that are not being reported by the mainstream media and highlighting them based upon the views others have that have read them. And it updates automatically throughout the day and is highly recommended viewing if you want to be in the know. Now, remember, do visit our website, theunituk.com, for all the very latest news. You can find our Facebook page by searching for The Unit UK, all one word. Join our community on Google+, Plus, where you can interact with us, voice your opinions, and post comments about our stories, and even get involved in the shows. And for all the latest tweets as they happen, then follow us on Twitter, at The E Unit. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for The Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. <laughs>